today's video, we're going to be looking at using commas to avoid ambiguity. First of all, what does ambiguity mean? Well, it means that something could be misunderstood or misinterpreted, causing confusion for the reader. So we use commas because commas can make a huge difference to the meaning of a sentence. Let's look at this first illustration. We've got two people hanging a picture. One is saying to the other, lower please, indicating that they want the picture hung lower. So the comma is placed after the word lower. If we miss that comma out, we could have a completely different meaning on our hands. So in this illustration, the comma's missed out and it says lower please. That makes it sound like we want the word please lowered towards the ground, which isn't what's meant at all. In this next example, we've got a dad eating lunch with his daughter here. And the daughter might say, let's eat dad, indicating let's start eating. Now, if that comma gets mixed out, we could have a completely different meaning on our hands. Let's eat dad. Well, that sounds like we're putting dad on a plate and eating him instead of the food, which is totally different. I've got an activity for you next. I've got a sentence here and I want you to have a go at drawing what that sentence says. When lightning struck, bright yellow people were scared. Pause the video, do the drawing, and we'll come back and see if you got the same as me. I wonder what you got. This is what I got. When lightning struck, bright yellow people were scared. Now, we don't very often see bright yellow people running around underneath a thunderstorm. So let's put the comma in and see what difference that makes. When lightning struck bright yellow, people were scared. Draw another picture and this time, see if it makes a difference to your interpretation. How did your picture look this time? This time, I've got the lightning is bright yellow and the people are scared. When lightning struck bright yellow, people were scared. Can you see what difference it made to the sentence? Okay, for this next activity, I'd like you to pause the video and copy out the sentences. And I'd like you to have a go at putting the commas in the correct place. When you start the video again, we'll have a look to see how you got on with your sentences. Okay, let's see if you've got the commas in the right place then. In the first sentence, we've got slow children crossing. Now, I don't think the children are being slow. I think we need to tell the traffic, slow children crossing as a warning. So we put the comma in here after the word slow. Slow children crossing. So it's telling the drivers to slow down because children are crossing. In our next sentence, when he's not at school, he loves eating his cat and his family. Well, that sounds a bit gruesome. We don't think he really loves eating his cat and his family. So we need to put the comma in the right place. So when he's not at school, comma, he loves eating his cat and his family. So. We've got a fronted adverbial here when he's not at school. And then we've got he loves eating, which is one thing that he loves. His cat, the second thing that he loves. And his family, the third thing he loves. Definitely not eating them at all. In our third sentence, all the time machines were getting more sophisticated. Time machines at the moment don't actually exist. So we want to change the meaning of this sentence. 
So we should have all the time, comma, machines were getting more sophisticated. So it shows that the machines were getting more sophisticated over time. We're not actually talking about time machines. In the fourth sentence, as the class sat around the campfire eating the bear, remained in the bushes. Now that doesn't sound right at all without the comma. And it makes it sound like the class are eating the bear. So we need to put a comma in the right place so that the class are sitting round the campfire and the bear is watching them from the bushes. So as the class sat around the campfire eating, comma, the bear remained in the bushes. That sounds better. And in our final sentence, hurry up and shoot, Grandad. We're going to lose the game. Now, are we actually shooting Grandad or are we telling Grandad to hurry up and shoot? I think we're telling Grandad to hurry up and shoot. So hurry up and shoot, comma, Grandad. We're going to lose the game. I wonder how you got on. Hopefully that's shown you how commas can be used and sometimes it makes it sound like they can quite literally save lives. Think about that next time you're doing a big write at school or if you're doing any of your homework. If you ever get stuck on this, you can have another look back at this video. Thanks for watching.